Now, I understand this is a wellness device and I understand medical devices in general of like, you know, what you can and can't say. So I won't push you on saying this is curative or preventive of anything. Thank you. The FDA may be that. listening <laughs> as they do with everything. But, you know, beyond wellness, uh, you know, we work in a medical clinic. I'm at one right now where we see a lot of ill patients and utilize a lot of different energy medicine as supportive, let's say, uh, to everything. Mm -hmm. Do you see this where it, it goes beyond just wellness practice and into the medical world as a supportive type device that is you know, bringing harmony, balance and everything to a patient that may not be in an optimized state already? Yeah. Yeah. So how I will answer this is I'll talk about what our plans are. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> that's probably a safe way to do it. So the PC uh, way. Yeah, that's, ex <laughs> <laughs> that's sort of exactly what we anticipate is. Just like if you have, you know, that say, let's use the same sit gut, um, leaky gut person, and you're going to have them go through, you know, a whole regimen of food interventions, exercise, rest, sleep, uh, all the, all the core getting back to health and you might add in something like photobiomodulation or PEMF, right? So in the short term setting, you add this as adding total energy to the body. Now, in the long term, what we plan to do is we plan to study these things. And we've actually got studies that are, that are in the initial phases of planning and being been submitted for IRB approval, um, looking at what exactly happens to, let's say, cognition, right? And when you energize the whole body, how much more do those neurons, which fire mainly through you know, fields and electricity, how much more efficiently do they work? So definitely, we foresee it going down that pathway. There's a bit of a prove it phase. You know, whenever you've got this new stuff, it typically takes some time to adopt that and bring it into the world of medicine. Um, look at how slow MRI is replacing CT scans, for mm. instance. You know, MRI, and it's largely a superior technology. It can be as fast, almost as fast as CT scan. But before somebody's going to invest in that kind of power, they want to see it works. So that takes 30 or 40 years, right? Yeah. We'll fast track it though. It won't be that long. <laughs> well, we got to fast track because even as you were saying like, all right, yeah, E equals MC square, like quantum physics and mechanics have been around for about a century or so. Like we're still working on Newtonian principles, right? Which are 340. It took a while to even get Newtonian to like kick in and kind of do the biomechanics of everything that led to a revolution of conventional medicine. So it's like, Ooh, is it going to be like 300 years before we get to like real like quantum kind of medicine and applying the science of now? But we're doing it. So it's like lucky and, and we're you're definitely a pioneer in all this. But hopefully we could serve as catalysts so we don't have to wait another couple hundred years before, you know, people can really apply this. We won't. So <laughs> I, I guarantee we won't because um, I was on a call yesterday with some folks at, um, at NASA and some oh, other really? folks in the, in the world who are planning, you know, what do we need to do to put people on Mars in a sustainable environment in 2040? Mm. So there are, there are these accelerators that, that tends to happen in, you know, the evolution of any species, right? And yeah. in this case, it's people wanting to go to space. That's kind of pushing us this way. Um, yeah. Elon Musk is they're propelling looking at, us. Yeah. 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 But you, you know, you have to be able at that point, then you throw biochemistry out the window. Right. And you have to, right? You have to at that point, if you're talking about somebody who's traveling to, let, let's just even say the moon and back, you need a new way of diagnosing. Mm -hmm. And that is something that actually in real time evaluates the quantum electrodynamic field, basically the electrodynamic field of a human. We call that a biofield, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of taking this reactive iteration, of chemistry, which is what we currently use as a standard of care. Then you actually back that up and say, okay, what's energetically happening in the software that's dictating what the hardware does. Exactly. And that is a like breakthrough stuff. I mean, there's, we've got this different company, different times, different talks, but I mean, that's the kind of stuff that is, it's not future science it's now. Oh no, it's absolutely now. And there's different ways of doing it. What you're saying, I always uh, explain this as what you're looking at in biochemistry is way downstream. It's, it's, you know, already so far down, you're just guessing what's upstream, 
upstream is the bioenergetics. That's the field. That's the quantum side of it all. That's really the answer of why, you know, that you have this deficiency downstream. Okay. That's information that's somewhat useful, but the real useful information is why the energetic starting point initiating factor that then cascaded downwards into the deficiency you're seeing on the biochemical side. So it's like, mm-hmm. I, I, I appreciate both because I know most of the world speaks in the downstream, you know, effects yep. of everything. So you want to meet them where they are, but you also want to then show the upstream of the whys of everything. And that is bioenergetics. And that's why I love the answers have to be bioenergetics as well. Mm-hmm. You know, that yeah, language it's, it's... speaks that language. So in the future, we will move away from all downstream and continue to look upstream where we're looking right now, where you certainly are looking right now. So it's it's really an important factor to consider as we continue to push what medicine is and what we should be looking at. <laughs>